Welcome back to Anime Ghost Audio, bringing you Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, Volume 2, Chapter 13, It Was You. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, it's awesome. A flashback to the demon with the horns being held by the throat up in the air his teeth shattered and broken gasping for air foaming at the mouth blood dripping from his nose and sweat on his face a voice spoke out you must not speak you must never tell anyone about me if you do I will know immediately I'm always watching you. I can't tell you! I can't tell you! The demon with the horns gritted his teeth, trembling and shaking. Shook his head from left to right while kicking his feet to the dirt. I can't tell you! I can't tell you! I can't tell you! Tanjiro looked concerned and thought to himself for a moment. I smell fear, shaking deep down in his bones. Suddenly the demon grew arms again, shooting out of the severed holes. I can't tell you! And he slashed both hands towards Tanjiro's face. Tanjiro closed his nearest eye and dodged out of the arm's reach, bracing his sword above his head to the left. And with a quick slash, he severed the demon's head from its body. It hovered for a moment in the air before the blood squirted out from the neck hole as it flopped to the ground and rolled. Ah. Tanjiro gritted his teeth and looked over. He saw his sister, Nezuko, leaned up against a nearby wall that was made out of river rocks. Again, I've learned nothing. Nezuko! He began to dash over towards her and knelt down on his knees. He reached outwards to touch her face. She's sleeping. Her bleeding has stopped. Sleep to heal herself? Touching her face lightly with his right hand, he closed his eyes and placed his forehead against hers. I'm sorry. So sorry. Just give me a little more time. Because your big brother is going to make you human again. The young man that was with him, wearing the striped kimono, fell to his knees and looked at the girl that they had saved placed against a wooden slat wall. Satoko. Tanjiro went over and knelt down to him and looked him in the eyes. Kazumi, are you all right? I've lost my betrothed. Do you think I'm all right? Kazumi, you may lose again and again, but you still have to keep living, no matter how beaten down you may be. Tundra's eyes showed concern, and then grabbed him by the collar, gripping his collar hard and pulling it towards himself as he yelled, What do you know? You're just a kid! Tanjiro smiled with his eyes and smirked a little bit and reached up with his left hand and placed it on the hands of Kazumi. Kazumi's tears began to well up in his eyes and Tanjiro removed his hand. He said, I'm going now. Here. He outstretched his right hand in a fist, and when Kazumi looked down, it revealed that he had stolen the charms from the demon before he killed it. I hope you find something of Satoko's in here to remember her by. The boy clutched the pendants to his chest as Tanjiro rose, he bowed. Did this happen to you too? Did it? 
I'm sorry for saying such a mean thing. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. He shouted to Tanjiro as Tanjiro walked away. After about ten paces, Tanjiro turned on his heels and waved goodbye, walking away until he disappeared. Tears continued to well up in Kazumi's eyes. Those hands, those wretched hands, thick and hardened from training in combat, they weren't the hands of a boy. Tanjiro's hands were gripped into fists as he walked away, and a crow flew down from the sky and landed on his right shoulder. Tanjiro thought to himself, with his brow clenched, It isn't just me. How many people has he killed? How many more has he made suffer? Muzan Kibasuji, I will never forgive you. Ah! Uh, next, you go to Asuka in Tokyo. Ah! Uh, rumors tell of a demon hiding there. Ah! Uh, the crow squawked to him. Huh? I'm off on my next job already? Yes, go! Wait a second. No, wait it. it pecked him several times as he ran away from it. Two days later in Asaka, the streets were bustling. Hundreds of people had walked in their kimonos and festival clothing, business attire with hats, and there was a trolley on tracks that ran through the middle of the town. Buildings that were modernized with glass windows and multiple stories, huge spires on them, and banners flying with all sorts of kanji for different types of stores, all under the dark, starless night with a sliver of a moon overhead. <sighs> what kind of town is this? It's night. But it's bright out. The buildings are so tall. What the... The city... The city... I am getting dizzy. Tanjiro was astonished, looking around. He had the wooden box on his back and held Nezuko's hand in his, bracing his wagging knees as he staggered each step through the people and the crowds. He had never seen such a city like this. Um, uh, let's go over there, Nezuko. He pulled his sister's hand and tugged as he ran on light feet on the dirt path. He approached a cart. It had the kanji for udon on it. A man was sitting in front, smoking a pipe with a striped kimono and white pants. The cart had large wagon wheels and was made out of wood, slats with a small window that opened to reveal some bowls stacked neatly and steam emerged from the back of the cart. It had an A-frame roof made out of wood slats. Yamakake Udon, please. A man wearing a white shawl gripped tightly with his left hand, looked haggard as he said to the shopkeeper. Yup. The shopkeeper bowed at him and motioned to a nearby bench. The haggard-looking Tanjiro and his sister slumped down onto that bench, and they were handed two cups of tea, which he sipped politely. With his eyes shut, he thought to himself, I've never been to a place like this. There's too many people. Suddenly, he sensed something and rose to his feet and looked around. He was looking through the crowd and through the sky. <laughs> he began to run towards this. That smell! Why here? 
It's the smell that was lingering at my house. He slammed through people with his shoulders and dug through them with his hands, outstretched. Muzan, keep a suji. He ran up behind a man wearing a white brimmed hat with a black piece of cloth wrapped around the middle of it and a black overcoat with a lacy floral design. He grabbed the left shoulder of the coat hard, gripping his hand, and jerked backwards, spinning the man around. They locked eyes. It's him! The man had long black hair that was curly, was pulled neatly back. His eyes were slit like a cat's eye, with veins that cracked through them like lightning. He had a slender face with a few veins protruding on his forehead. Tanjiro reached down and began to draw his blade. Daddy. He stopped in his tracks, chattered through the crowd, murmured. The man gripped a little girl in his arms and looked down at her. Who's that? She had pink bows in her pigtails. She was wearing modern clothing, a very frilly dress with multiple layers. Shivers ran up the spine of Tanjiro. This guy, it's him, it's him. He's pretending to be a human. They stood outside of a nearby shop with paper lanterns. People were walking between them then around the man looked at him. Is there something I can do for you? You appear to be quite upset. Oh dear. What's wrong? Mommy. Tanjiro's hand covered his mouth. His eyes were wide. They're human. The girl and the woman smell completely human. Don't they know? Don't they understand? He's a demon and he eats people. Do you know this boy? No, not at all. What a nuisance. I don't know him at all. Perhaps he has mistaken me for someone else. Chatter continued as people hustled and bustled about the streets. He gripped his daughter close to himself. Oh, really? With a quick... <laughs> Muzan used his claws to slash the neck of a nearby passenger that was walking. Blood spurted from the three claw marks, and Tanjiro shook awake. <sighs> the man said, as he stumbled, gripping his neck. Honey, what's wrong? Suddenly he transformed into a demon. Veins erupted over his face, neck, and arms. His teeth grew long like a beast, and his tongue hung out of his mouth as it foamed. His wife screamed. Tanjiro said, Stop! Trying to push through the crowd, but it was too late. The man had begun to chomp down into his wife's neck. As he gripped her, she tried to push him off. She screamed, Kyaa! And he was beginning to eat her alive. Thanks so much for listening to another chapter of Demon Slayer. If you enjoy the content, continue to listen and tell a friend. Consider leaving us a review on wherever you listen to your podcast. And until next time, this has been Anime Goes Audio.